वेलकम अगेन इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट रिमेनिंग आइडेंटिकल फीचर्स ऑफ स्टप्टोकोकस निमोनिया फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी हैव टू डिस्कस विरुलेंस फैक्टर्स ऑफ द स्टप्टोकोकस निमोनिया ओके द विरुलेंस ऑफ स्टप्टोकोकस निमोनिया डिपेंड अपॉन थ्री फैक्टर्स दैट इज मेनली थ्री फैक्टर्स दैट इंक्लूड कैप्सुलर पॉलीसैक्राइड न्यूमोलाइजिंग एंड ए ऑटोलाइसिन दिस आर द थ्री इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्टर दैट कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट विरुलेंस टू द स्टप्टोकोकस निमोनिया ओके we know that streptococcus pneumonia are capsulator right so this capsular polysaccharide become a virulent factor for the streptococcus pneumonia that is because of its acidic and hydrophilic property this capsular polysaccharide protect the cocci or the organism from phagocytosis so capsulator streptococcus pneumonia are not phagocytosed due to the abundance of its capsular material and the non capsulated strains are avirulent or non pathogenic and we already discussed that the capsular polysaccharide are antigenic in nature that is they can induce the production of antibody against the capsular polysaccharide right so the antibody to this capsular polysaccharide give protection against infection in all host body then next factor is pneumolysin this pneumolysin is a membrane damaging toxin produced by streptococcus pneumoniae and it become a virulent factor because of its cytotoxic as well as complement activating properties cytotoxic means it can damage the cell and this pneumolysin is immunogenic that is it also have an antigenic property can induce the antibody production against this toxin then pneumolysin negative mutants show reduced virulence or pathogenicity that is the streptococcus pneumonia have ability to produce such pneumolysin toxin shows high percentage of virulence or pathogenicity and negative cases they shows reduced pathogenicity then another virulent factor of pneumoly pneumococcus is autolysin this autolysin causes lysis of their own cells or the cells of the streptococcus streptococcus pneumonia itself and releases the bacterial content into the infected tissues and thereby contribute a virulence or pathogenicity okay and besides these three important virulent factors streptococcus pneumonia also produces an oxygen labile hemolysin and a leucosin but these are we can make no contribution to the virulence or pathogenicity so the important factors that contribute to virulence or pathogenicity to the streptococcus pneumonia are capsular polysaccharide pneumolysin as well as autolysin okay okay next is about pathogenicity here streptococcal infection is commonly endogenous but exogenous infection may also occur especially with a highly virulent strain that is highly pathogenic one causes exogenous infection but normally the streptococcal infection is endogenous infection okay then streptococcus pneumonia are one of the most common bacteria that cause pneumonia both lobar as well as bronco pneumonia Lobar pneumonia means it is a pneumonia with the inflammation of alveolar spaces and this pneumonia or infection may affect the lobes of the lungs also that is lobar pneumonia and bronco pneumonia means pneumonia with the inflammation of bronchioles and this bronco pneumonia is a fatal case in all infectious host we know that streptococcus pneumonia is a normal flora of human body right that is the human carry the streptococcus pneumonia in their throats so during breathing this nasopharyngeal secretion containing streptococcus pneumonia enter into the lower respiratory tract right that is the common event that may occur even in the sleep also at that time the our normal defense mechanism such as entrapment expulsion or cough reflex may prevent the establishment of infection by these streptococcus pneumonia that enter into our lower respiratory tract but 
when the host normal defense mechanism get lowered by any other infection viral infection or pulmonary congestion stress or any other factors like immunodeficiency malnutrition etc this streptococcus pneumonia can infect or can multiply penetrate the bronchioles as well as alveolar spaces of the lungs and causes lobar as well as bronchopneumonia okay and this bronchopneumonia is almost always a secondary infection to this lobar pneumonia that is the damage to the respiratory epithelium and excessive bronchial secretion caused by the primary infection by streptococcus pneumonia lead to mainly bronchopneumonia and bacteremia as well as toxemia is common in early stages of infections toxemia is mainly due to the diffusion of capsular polysaccharide diffused capsular polysaccharide is mainly known as sss that is soluble specific substances the soluble specific substances causes toxemia in the infected host okay then streptococcus pneumonia also produces separative lesions like empyema pericarditis otitis sinusitis conjunctivitis arthritis peritonitis etc these are the separative or pus forming inflammatory infection that are caused by streptococcus pneumonia and meningitis is also common in case of streptococcal infection and this meningitis is sec- secondary to the separative lesions like otitis sinusitis pneumonia etc so lobar as well as bronchopneumonia is the most important infections caused by streptococcus pneumonia and other infections like separative infection as well as meningitis also secondary to the pneumonia caused by streptococcal infection okay and the streptococcus pneumonia causes mainly opportunistic infection because uh, they are the normal flora of human body when the host defense mechanism get lowered by any other factor they may activated and causes infection that is known as opportunistic infection okay that's all about pathogenicity and about epidemiology okay the main source of human infection is the respiratory tract of carriers as well as patients but patients have less important in the transmission of streptococcus pneumoniae so carriers are the main source of infection that is carriers can carry or harbor the streptococcus pneumoniae in their throat as a normal flora and they get transmitted by contaminated droplets or droplet nuclei and this transmission or dissemination or spreading is facilitated by overcrowding after the transmission the disease become positive that is the infection become positive only when the host resistance is get lowered by factors or contributory factors such as respiratory viral infection pulmonary congestion stress malnutrition immunodeficiency or alcoholism that is due to these reasons or due to these contributory factors when the host immune defense mechanism get lowered the streptococcus pneumoniae get activated and cause infection in their host okay so we can say that they causes or streptococcus pneumoniae causes opportunistic infection right then the fatality rate of this infection caused by streptococcus pneumoniae may vary according to the virulence of infecting serotypes or infecting strains here type 3 streptococcus pneumoniae is more virulent than other strains okay so fatality rate or death rate mainly depend upon the virulence or pathogenicity of the infecting organisms or infecting strains then in india the lobar pneumonia is usually a spor- sporadic disease sporadic means that is irregularly occurring diseases but they may cause epidemics also in the closed communities or overcrowding areas they cause epidemics also generally or commonly they causes sporadic disease okay then bronchopneumonia results when an epidemics of influenza or other viral infection of respiratory tract occurs that is there is any epidemics of influenza or other viral infection present in their community that causes or result in the bronchopneumonia produced by or caused by streptococcus pneumonia okay that's all about epidemiology okay next is about laboratory diagnosis here first of all we have to collect specimen for the diagnosis of infection right we can collect sputum 
സി എസ് എഫ് ഓർ സെറിബ്രോ സ്പൈനൽ ഫ്ലൂയിഡ് ഓർ ബ്ലഡ് ഫോർ ദ കൾട്ടിവേഷൻ ഓർ കൾച്ചർ മെത്തേഡ് ആൻഡ് ഓൾസോ യൂറിൻ ആസ് എ സാമ്പിൾ ഫോർ ദ ഡിറ്റക്ഷൻ ഓഫ് ആൻറ്റിജൻ സോ ദീസ് ആർ ദ സാമ്പിൾസ് ഓർ സ്പെസിമിൻ കളക്റ്റഡ് ഫോർ ദ ഡയഗ്നോസിസ് ഓഫ് സ്ട്രെപ്റ്റോകോക്കൽ ഇൻഫെക്ഷൻ ദറ്റ് ഈസ് പ്യൂട്ടം സെറിബ്രോ സ്പൈനൽ ഫ്ലൂയിഡ് ബ്ലഡ് ആസ് വെൽ ആസ് യൂറിൻ യൂറിൻ ഈസ് മെയിൻലി യൂസ്ഡ് ഫോർ ദ ഡിറ്റക്ഷൻ ഓഫ് ആൻറ്റിജൻ ഓക്കെ നെക്സ്റ്റ് ഈസ് അബൌട്ട് ദിയർ മെത്തേഡ്സ് ഓഫ് ഐഡൻറ്റിഫിക്കേഷൻ ദർ ആർ സെവറൽ മെത്തേഡ്സ് ആർ യൂസ്ഡ് ഫോർ ദ ഐഡൻറ്റിഫിക്കേഷൻ ഓഫ് സ്ട്രെപ്റ്റോകോക്കസ് ന്യൂമോണിയെ വിച്ച് മേ ഇൻക്ലൂഡ് മൈക്രോസ്കോപ്പി കൾച്ചറിംഗ് അനിമൽ ഇനോക്കുലേഷൻ ആൻറ്റിജൻ ഡിറ്റക്ഷൻ ബയോമാർക്കേഴ്സ് മോളിക്കുലാർ മെത്തേഡ്സ് ഇൻ മൈക്രോസ്കോപ്പി ഗ്രാം സ്ട്രെയിനിങ് ഇസ് ദ കോമൺ പ്രൊസീജിയർ യൂസ്ഡ് ടു ഡിറ്റക്ട് ദ മോർഫോളജി ഓഫ് ഇൻഫെക്റ്റീവ് പാത്തോജൻ റൈറ്റ് ഹിയർ ഓൾസോ വി യൂസ് ഗ്രാം സ്ട്രെയിനിങ് പ്രൊസീജിയർ ഫോർ സ്പ്യൂട്ടം ആസ്പിറേറ്റ്സ് ഫ്രം ഇയോ ആസ് വെൽ ആസ് സി എസ് എഫ് ആൻഡ് വിച്ച് മേ ഷോസ് ഗ്രാം പോസിറ്റീവ് ഡിപ്ലോ കോക്കെ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ദ സ്പെസിമിൻ കണ്ടെയ്ൻ സ്ട്രെപ്റ്റോ കോക്കസ് ന്യൂമോണിയെ ഗ്രാം സ്ട്രെയിനിങ് പ്രൊസീജിയർ പ്രൊഡ്യൂസസ് ഗ്രാം പോസിറ്റീവ് ഡിപ്ലോ കോക്കെ റൈറ്റ് ദെൻ നെക്സ്റ്റ് കൾച്ചർ മെത്തേഡ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് കൾട്ടിവേഷൻ ഫോർ കൾച്ചറിംഗ് വി ഹാവ് ടു യൂസ് സ്പ്യൂട്ടം ബ്ലഡ് ഓർ സി എസ് എഫ് എസ് എ സ്പെസിമൻ കോമൺലി വി യൂസ് ദ സ്പ്യൂട്ടം ഫോർ ദ കൾച്ചറിംഗ് മെത്തേഡ്സ് ഹിയർ ദ സ്പ്യൂട്ടം ആഫ്റ്റർ ഹോമോജിനൈസേഷൻ ഇസ് ഇനോക്കുലേറ്റഡ് ഓൺ ബ്ലഡ് ഡഗാർ പ്ലേറ്റ്സ് ആൻഡ് ഇൻക്യുബേറ്റഡ് തേർട്ടി സെവൻ ഡിഗ്രി സെൽഷ്യസ് അണ്ടർ ഫൈവ് ടു ടെൻ പെർസെൻറ്റേജ് കാർബൺ ഡയോക്സൈഡ് ദിസ് കാർബൺ ഡയോക്സൈഡ് ഫെസിലിറ്റേറ്റ് ദ ഹീമോലൈസസ് ഇൻ ബ്ലഡ് ഡഗാർ റൈറ്റ് if the specimen contains streptococcus pneumoniae after incubation for 18 hours they produces small dome shaped glistening colonies with the area of green discoloration this green discoloration indicate alpha hemolysis in the blood agar okay then in case of blood agar the sample or the blood should be collected in the acute stage of infection then only we get the positive result with the blood culturing okay then another method of diagnosis lab diagnosis is animal inoculation in this method isolation of infectious agent may be obtained by intraperitoneal inoculation in the mice here inoculated mice die in 1 to 3 days which indicate positive result and the streptococcus pneumonia may be demonstrated in the peritoneal exudate or hurt blood of the mice so here mice is the experimental animal used to isolate the streptococcus pneumonia from the sample and the isolation is done by through intraperitoneal inoculation peritoneum means it is the lining of abdominal cavity so intraperitoneum means the specimen is inoculated into the peritoneum that is the intraperitoneal inoculation okay and if there is any positive result the streptococcus pneumoniae can be demonstrated or can be isolated from the intraperitoneal exudates or hurt blood of the mouse okay then another method is antigen detection okay as we know that specific soluble substances as well as capsular polysaccharides are antigenic in nature right that is they can induce antibody production against themselves right so such antigenic structures are identified by the methods like precipitation lactase agglutination counter immunoelectrophoresis immunochromatography etc this immunochromatographic technique is only available for the antigen detection or polysaccharide antigen detection from the urine and in case of sss that is specific soluble substances can be identified by precipitation or lactose agglutination test and capsular polysaccharide can be identified by counter immunoelectrophoresis from blood urine as well as csf okay then another method is biomarker detection in case of streptococcal infection there are two biomarkers that is crp crp means is a c reactive protein as well as pro calcitonin these are the two biomarkers of streptococcal infection okay and here crp testing is the common procedure or routine diagnostic procedure for the streptococcal infection this is tested by passive agglutination using lactose particles coated with the anti crp antibody then another method is molecular methods here pcr based methods are used for the detection or identification of streptococcus pneumonia in the molecular level okay 
that's all about laboratory diagnosis of streptococcal infection next we are going to discuss about treatment okay if the infecting strain is penicillin sensitive then the drug of choice is penicillin in the severe cases and amoxicillin in the milder cases okay but still there are many strains which are resistant to penicillin and such penicillin resistant strains are also resistant to other antibiotics like erythromycin tetracycline etc and their mode of resistant is not production of beta lactamase but alteration in the penicillin binding proteins on the bacterial surface that is the main reason for their resistance not the production of beta lactamase or penicillinase enzyme it is only due to the bacterial alteration or changes in the penicillin binding protein okay and such resistant strains can be treated by using cephalosporin that is third generation cephalosporin can be used to inhibit such resistant or penicillin resistant strains and in case of life threatening illness of life threatening or serious cases we can use vancomycin instead penicillin okay that's all about treatment okay next is about prophylaxis or what are the important measures we have to take to control the infection okay here immunization or vaccination is the important method used to control the streptococcal infection okay for the same we have two type of vaccines that is a polyvalent polysaccharide vaccine and a seven valent conjugate vaccine this polyvalent polysaccharide vaccine contain polysaccharide that is capsular polysaccharide antigen that is polysaccharide antigen isolated capsular polysaccharide antigen isolated from the streptococcus pneumoniae and which is used as vaccines this vaccine provide about 80 to 90 percentage of protection against the streptococcal infection okay but it is not meant for general use it is only used in the persons those who are high risk in pneumococcal infection that is the person those who have the diseases like liver infection or uh, hurt infection or diabetes immunodeficiencies etc there may be a chance for lowering the immunity or their immunity right so such a persons are given such uh, vaccines for uh, controlling the infection okay and also this type of vaccine that is polyvalent polysaccharide vaccine it is not recommended in children under age of two years then another type of vaccine is seven valent conjugate vaccine conjugate means combined vaccine that is the this conjugate or seven valent conjugate vaccine contain streptococcal vaccine as well as which is combined with the protein of cornibacterium diphtheria that is combined or conjugate vaccine this vaccine is used in the children from two months to two years and its protection mainly depend upon the serotypes that is included in the vaccine that is uh, protection period mainly depend upon the strain which is used for the preparation of vaccine okay so these are the two types of vaccine used for controlling the streptococcal infection that's all about prophylaxis okay that's all about streptococcus pneumoniae see you again in the next video thank you